Well, if we're being honest, this has been a really disappointing season at Distillery. After crashing out of Europe in the last episode, we let some players go on deadline day that we otherwise might not have, including a record sale which we'll reflect on in a moment. But two things are giving me hope and keeping me going. Firstly, Blah might be overshadowing us and doing a limb field in Europe. And more importantly, we have just had our first spectacular full youth intake. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome along to part 164 of this build -a nation story, Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. My spirits have been lifted in the last week after a very frustrating season. The transition has taken a bit of time, and as you can see, even heading into today's two games, we are short of a lot of players. We've had some serious injuries, lots of little ones too, and it's been a bit of a frustrating period, which we'll talk about in a moment. However, We've got a record sale and a couple of other surprise departures to reflect on. We've also got to look at Lan and a brilliant European run. And we've of course got to look ahead at our youth intake and what it could do for the rest of this save. So if you're looking forward to all of that, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Of course, crashing out of Europe in January has meant I've had to adapt my plan slightly, which was to show a European game in every video. I obviously can't do that now. But Glenarvan and Lan will be the focus of this one. And of course, I'll play the international game off camera in between. It looks like the usual top four are going to be there in the Irish Prem. So it's about what we can do, planning ahead for next season to really have a go full tilt. Now, there's plenty of good news on that front. But I have taken some gambles too, because falling out of Europe meant we've essentially lost an extra seven, eight, nine million in income that we would have had in previous years. And it also meant that we didn't have as many games in this part of the year, although it doesn't feel like it at the moment. So what we've done as a result in the last week of the January transfer window is a bit more work on the outs than we might have done otherwise. We were looking to get rid of one midfielder due to squad registration issues. What I did in the end was let out two as well as finally the legend it is not Jim Morrison. Jonathan Morrison has left the club. It is a record sale. £6 million rising to 6.75 with a small sell on as well. He replaces the Derby County goalkeeper in the Premier League who went off to Manchester United for 70 odd million. And he's a pretty solid keeper for them. It's a good deal for us because now Morgan Hassin will be our number one. We're looking to bring in another keeper in the summer, of course. But for now, with Doherty as a backup, we were going to be fine domestically. So for one last time, we say goodbye to Jonathan, or as we'll always know him, Jim Morrison. Good on you, you've got a Premier League move, and best of luck for the future. The other ones that go out though were a bit of a surprise. I couldn't really get a good deal for any of the players I wanted to sell, so in the end I had to loan out two of the backup players just to see I guess if one of them would develop to potential and come back a first teamer, and if one was maybe going to get themselves in the shop window. So those two... A Damien Dunn, who's now 28 years of age, he goes off to West Bromwich Albion and he's done okay there. Did get a red card, which was a shame, but he scored a goal and he's had an impact at times. And the other one is Jordan Gash, who's gone on loan to Birmingham. Now he's actually improving there and he's starting to look a very good player again. So at 24, might be someone who comes back and plays for us because in the championship, he is lighting things up at the moment over in England. So there are our backup players who are now playing in a championship and playing key roles for teams. We have got a very good squad. We've got to bear that in mind. Add to that the fact that we've also loaned out players earlier in the window you knew about. Xavier, who went to AZ Altmar, has improved tremendously and will come back in the summer. And then we've got Aaron Simmons, who's gone to Doncaster. And he's almost single-handedly trying to keep them in the football league. They are still a few points behind now, but they were well adrift. And he has got them back within touching distance. So great effort from him, he's improving too. No other ins, we couldn't really gamble it without the finances. And we couldn't find the perfect players. So what I thought with Morrison and that, let's reduce the wage bill a bit. Let's get rid of some of the players we're not that worried about for now. And then have more money to spend in the summer. And hopefully, Champions League football again. So there is the plan on a transfer front. A record sale in Jonathan Morrison. But let's have a look at the schedule because... It's been a bit disappointing. Yes, we've won most of the games, but we've not been battering teams bar the first game since you left me. And we've also lost the chance to be invincible again. I thought with less fixtures and no Europe, maybe we'd finally do it. 
It was actually one of the games our first team played, which was really disappointing. So you were with me for West Ham and Leon. Could have ended so differently, couldn't it? We then beat Balamina 9-1. Howard got a hat-trick. Davis a brace. Halston, Press, McGuckin and Lonsdale all with one apiece. A 4-0 win at home to Lahn in a Shield final. An own goal. Two penalties from Miraval Austin. And Jonathan Evans wrapping up the first trophy. We also won 4-1 against Lahn in the Irish Cup second round. Ian Lewington scored against us again, but an own goal, Evans, and two for Merivale Austin was enough to get us over the line. A 3-1 win against Cliftonville, thanks to Halston, Elliott, and Thompson's first half goals. Ryan Miller, our former striker, scoring against us there. A 4-0 against Lahn in a League Cup final, same result in a different competition. They had a red card at the end of the first half, which really put them to the sword. Jonathan Evans had scored prior to that, but Scully, Lonsdale, and Miss Elidis all got one after. A 2-1 win at Linfield in the league thanks to Mark Scully, which turned us around from 1-0 down. We did then lose 1-0 to Coleraine, and it was their January deadline day sign-in. We'll talk a little bit about them across the league in a minute, but this guy was the pick of the bunch. Look how good he is. He's 18 years of age. He's probably good enough to be a backup in our team. And although he's not a great penalty taker, he did the job for them there, and he is scoring goals across all competitions, albeit his fitness isn't great. We then beat Crusaders by one goal to nil in another unconvincing performance. Paul Elliott scored the early winner. John McGuckin got a late red card. A 5-0 win against Cliftonville was much better with a Scully hat-trick and Merivale Austin and Miss Elidis getting one each. A 2-1 win thanks to Jordan Howard in the Irish Cup quarters against Portadown. A 0-0 draw at Larne which we dominated but was disappointing. A 4-0 win against Portadown in the Irish Prem. We played them back-to-back -back for some reason. Howard, Scully, Merivale, Austin and Evans and then 5-1 in the league game away from home with Scully getting 4 and Merivale, Austin 1. So today we've got Glenarvan and Lahn. We face Glenarvan in the cup as well. Then it's the league split and hopefully we'll finish with an Irish Cup final and season review. But what I wanted to show you and the reason we've come back here is two things that are going to help this save. The first one is Lahn who fair play to them are flying the flag for Northern Ireland. They got through against Sloven Liberec on penalties in the knockout round of the Europa Conference. They then won in the last 16 after a brilliant 3-0 at home to Victoria Pelzen. They were beaten in the second leg but the job was done. And they now face a Mets side, yes from a big nation, but only a three-star reputation. And they lost a few players in January, so maybe they've got a chance. Their lone striker who couldn't finish that they got in in January, but he's doing a pretty good job for them in Europe. We have a look at the Irish Premiership in full. We've covered most of them now. But Coleraine did bring in that superstar striker. They also brought in a new goalkeeper from Larn, ironically, after Larn had got one from Cork earlier in the day. And not a lot from Linfield, but again, Larn did bring in some quality through the window. So there is definitely improvement. We just need it to start happening before the European qualifiers in the summer. The final thing to show you before we get into it, though, are the stars of this year's youth intake. Let's go back to the 15th and the new intake, which for the first time included four or five brilliant players in the same one. We had one intake with Matthew Freeman, but not much else. Now we've got a bucket load. The first of them, Jamie Stevenson, I've put straight in the first team to work on his determination and his ambition. His personality is not great, but he's got bundles of potential. The next one is a goalkeeper, Lee Corrigan, who I think will be pretty decent. He's probably already as good as Ashley Doherty and we may play him this season before the end. Emmett McNair is a right winger who has all the key attributes, is a great crosser of the ball. And maybe with Vucinic pushing his toys out the pram, with Elliot reaching 30 now, he could be a natural successor as a backup. Ashton O'Grady, not a great centre-half at the moment, but enormous potential. Good jump and reach, good in the tackle. Got some of the key things we want to see. And then a couple of others like Willie McKitty, a decent right winger again, but probably not as good as the one we had earlier. So a really good intake, lots of good players coming through. Even Ross Fleming's a decent striker. And for some of those, even if they don't reach their full potential, they will really help improve the nation. So I'm thrilled with it. For now though, let's go and get through our two league fixtures. Glenarvan at home is the first of them. Due to the fact that we've now got injuries after letting three players go, I have promoted a few of our youth team players. Shane Lowry came through last year's intake and is improving a bit. But Gorman is the main one. He was signed from Glenarvan last summer when he was linked with English clubs. 
and that boy's coming on leaps and bounds, so he will be involved in at least one of today's games. We've got two games in the space of three days. We've got international duty for some, including our Northern Irish boys, who I don't really want to play today. So I'm going to make a pretty sensible decision with the lineup, and we'll be back in a minute to run through it. Right then, here we go, and with Northern Ireland in action in 48 hours, in a winnable group for qualifying, I have left out all the international boys. So Elliot, Press, Burns, and who was the other one? Thompson, all left out of the squad. Hassin does start, I'm hoping he'll be alright, but the rest of the team is rotated. It may cause problems on Friday. The two promoted youth players both make the bench, but the 11 we're going to be relying on. A Morgan Hassin in goal. Freeman's at right back. Now he is on international duty. And I'm tempted to switch him. In fact, I'm going to. Freeman will be on the bench for this game. I'm going to try not to use him if I can. So it's Stowell at right back with Urza on the left. Davis and Bird at centre half. We've gone for Bayavang and Lonsdale to midfield too. Merival Austin the number 10. And then Vucinic and Misalidis off Scully up front. Not been as prolific this year, Mark Scully, just over one a game. He will be replaced in the summer if we find a superstar. But like last year, we keep missing out on them. So let's go and get through to the Glenarvan match. It should be winnable, albeit we're not quite as free-flowing at the minute. So let's go into it, see how we get on. Hopefully it'll be a good one. No former players that I recognise there. I did notice in the preview that Mark Wilson was injured, who always scores against us. And Kean's on the bench, who must be getting on now. He was a former centre half here. Through the tunnel interview into the first half. Hopefully, plenty of highlights and plenty of goals. We're just six minutes on the clock and we've got a free kick with Miss Elidis, which bird heads just wide. I'm a little bit surprised, not so much this game, but the alarm one that we didn't get offered the chance to call it off because we've got 13 or 14 players away and at least nine or 10 of them are our own first teamers. So, very odd we didn't get the chance to call the game off, but. With the way the league split works here, I just think they've run out of ideas of how to get the games in. The Scully gets in one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, that long game we're playing on Friday has been moved so many times due to Lange's European run. As Bayavang finally scores. Third time lucky from the set pieces. Miss Elidis in from the left. Bayavang with the big header. We're at a very important stage on the contractual front too because Vucinic, Bayavang, etc. All end in their unhappiness now after their failed January moves. And if we can get them contractually tied down just before the new summer to new deals, it should prevent that unhappiness while they're newly on those terms. So that's something we're going to work on through April and May. But for now, it's 1-0 to Distillery. It's a very dominant performance. As we return with a Merival lost in corner, long gone are the days where we're 3 or 4 up by the 25 minute mark. We're struggling a bit more to be cohesive this season. We knew it was going to be harder with a lot of turnover of players, but... The unhappiness since January has definitely had an effect on performances. Going out of Europe has affected us financially and what we can do. And that uncertainty, because even I don't know which ones of these players we're going to sell in the summer. I've got an idea which ones it's going to be. But finding those replacements is tricky. We're starting to expand our scouting searches now. We're looking regularly in South America, in Eastern Europe. We're trying to find more and more. And while we might have one or two gems coming in, as soon as we spot a big upgrade, we keep getting outpaid for them. Outbid, sorry. We keep getting outpaid. And we just can't do anything about it. How on earth has that gone in? It's an own goal that's awarded. Miss Elidis dinked a crossing. It hit off Stewart and just looped over the keeper. Bizarre goal. It's 2-0 on the way to half time, And it looks like we're well in control of this. As Vucinic away down the right. Merival Austin picks it up. Has time. Gets the shot away. It's wide. And of course, we will try and rest these boys at the hour mark because we need them fit on Friday. We know that a few of them, Bayavang Urza and Vucinic, will be away on international duty. So we'll protect five others. Hassin, of course, won't be here. We'll see what we can get done as Fry goes downfield, headed away by Bird to Merival Austin. Davis picks the ball up and it's in the midfield, not convincingly. We get away with it and Vucinic plays on to Miss Elidis. Good run. In he goes one on one, in for 3 0 via weak goalkeeping. And this is the difference. Apart from the top five, there's no competition in this league. Lan, Glen Torren, very good sides. Colrain, a decent one as well. But for now, the rest is not competitive. And at this stage, we're chipping another one in. And we're looking to make it four. If we do, I'll get some of the youngsters on straight away. Urza's shot goes over. So we'll give it five more. And then we'll make our decision. But Vucinic is not coming off. We've got an hour on the clock. Let's go and do it now. It will be Trevor Davis who we'll need on Friday. 
He'll be replaced by Hardin. Urza will go in at centre half. I want to protect Lonsdale, Merival, Austin, probably Scully as well. So we'll have a look at Gorman in midfield for Lonsdale with Bayavang switching over. Lowry can come on for Merival, Austin. Morgan Griffiths can come on for Misalidis, I think. I'm not sure how this is going to work out here. Maybe we do protect Vucinic. I'm going to do it. Morgan Griffiths will come on for him. And then we'll go for Jonathan Evans for Scully. Miss Elidis will go through the middle. Griffiths in the middle of the three. And then one of those guys is going to have to play off the right. Shane Lowry, not great at it. Evans might be okay. Or should we put Miss Elidis there? Let's try and work this out logically. We can go by a bang up front. Miss Elidis off the right. Lowry and Gorman in the middle, which is not ideal, but it will do on this occasion, I feel. We'll put him on a support duty as a playmaker. We we'll try and play the people's strengths here. We'll go and get back into it. With half an hour to go, a 3-0 the game should be won. Well, as it often does, the subs have taken the momentum out of the game and we get to stoppage time without any further incident. It's going to be a comfortable win, but can Lowry or Gorman do something magical to finish off? Gorman here on the edge of the box, chance to shoot. Straight at a goalkeeper against his former club. Only 30 seconds remaining. Can we hold on to the clean sheet? And if so, it's been a pretty perfect day, if we're being honest, as Miss Elidis gets it on the right. He carries it down the line. Challenged out for a throw. That should be it. I don't really know why we saw it, but a good win. The attendance is still going up. The average attendance higher than it's ever been. And with other teams doing well in Europe, look, this season's probably not about us. We've got to rebuild. We've got to make it worthwhile next year. But a good win. Let's see how other teams have got on. We'll be back in a moment after our international game. Some Friday night football against Lahn. Well, here we are then, following a comfortable but not spectacular 1-0 win over Cyprus in which Albert Press, our player, got the winner. It is a return to domestic action without a number of players. A quick note I hadn't realised is that Linfield have had Windsor Park expanded. They've now got a 23,000 seater and there were over 19 in for our international game. Today though, it's Distillery v Lan, it's Coleraine v Linfield, all the big boys getting it on. Let's see what team we can put out. We'll be back in a minute to run through it. Well, I think it would be fair to describe this team as makeshift now, which is a bit disturbing during the internationals. We have got, what, 14 senior fit players and O'Donnell is barely fit in that. McGuckin and Griffiths are the only two fully fit senior pros on the bench. Four others are on youth contracts and if we look at the 11, there's a few areas it's a little piece together. So we've got Doherty in goal, Hardin and Stalder fullbacks with Davis and Bird at centre half, Houston and Lonsdale in midfield two, Miss Elidis having to play out on the right, and then Evans off the left, Maraval Austin number 10, and Mark Scully through the middle up front. It's still a decent team, we should be winning in truth. If we can get two or three up, we've got plenty of talent on the bench to bring on. If not, we've not really got a game changer, and it could be a very difficult night. Well, here we are then, as Lana forced into plenty of changes themselves. We go into this one against our former player, Ian Lewinson. Some quality across the pitch like Marshall, who always seems to do well. But let's just hope we can get the result. If we get this win, we should win the title with a couple of games to spare. And the good news then is we can bring those youth players in and start to see if they're going to be good enough to be part of our squad. Because one of the gambles we're taking this summer, we're going to try and go big on transfers again. But what it does mean, with only 12 non-homegrown slots and with a few of those reserves moving on, like McKenzie, like probably Griffiths, who have always held one of those sort of third team positions, it does give us a problem in terms of squad depth. And what we'll probably need to do is promote 7 or 8 under 20s to be part of our squad. And if those guys can start stepping up quickly, it's a big bonus for us. As we get in with Evans down the left, it's a good challenge by his namesake. Delivers the second time, no. And Merival Austin's shot is blocked. Halston misses the header and it falls for Hardin, who's cutting in from right back. We can't do anything with it. 0-0, 5 gone. Lisbon Distillery on top. Well, a very quiet half in the end. Only five minutes to the break and it's Doherty with a big kick downfield, which no one's going to get near. Narona brings it away to Lewinson, who does seem to score against us most times. And Evans has it at the back as Lahn bring it forward. Big ball towards Davis, who heads away well. And Halston into midfield for Merival Austin. I think Halston's the only one now who's not ended his unhappiness, but he does deliver a good ball there to Evans. Options in the middle, he finds Maraval Austin, cross the flex towards Scully, 
and it's hoofed away to the edge of the box but Halston nicks in to the byline himself and cuts it back for Harding. In on his natural left foot, deflected shot off the woodwork. Had the keeper beaten, it was a bit of a bizarre one. It's away as far as Dunlop who can bring it clear. Evans commits a silly foul and it stays nil-nil. At half time, it may well be that scoreline. It's the same one that they held us by last time. With Linfield 2-0 up, Lana gaining a point on Coleraine. And I'm not enjoying what I'm watching. Merival Austin having a stinker. We've got Griffiths waiting in the wings if need be. Well, here come Lahm with the first chance of the second half. It's a flick on from a long throw. It's pretty poor defending, but Doherty does his job in the end. And we're looking for that ball out because Stowart left back has space to carry it forward. Will he do that though? He does. Looks up for Evans, who's not had a great second half of the year. Kind of wish I'd allowed him to be recalled from his loan because if we could have done that, we would have saved money this half of the year. We're paying big wages for a player who was going to make a difference in Europe. And he's now just stealing a spot from Miss Elidis in the league, which is a shame. As Halston carries the ball forward. Lesson learned for next year. To Miss Elidis on the right. Takes on his man. There's three in the middle. It's a good ball in towards Evans. And he heads over. Oh, not a great finish there. I'm going to give it five more minutes. And then my frustration's getting the better of me. We'll see this corner out. And then Merival Austin will come off. As Scully heads away a long corner. They're having their fair share of movements in this game. They've not created a really golden chance yet. As Miss Elidis brings it away down the right. Carries it past his man again. Waits for that support. Challenged by Warburton. It's good defending. And Bird heads it away for Lewington. But only as far as Marshall. He gives it to Dunlop on halfway. And Lon have got a two on one. Harding does incredibly well there. And Lonsdale switches the play to Evans and Stow. Little bit frantic. Little bit end to end this match. Not what we wanted. Evans back to the edge for Halston. Finds Stow. The through ball is poor. And Narona goes downfield to Davis, who can bring it forward again. Surely this long old highlight has got a lead to something. Halston on the right, chips over to Scully. In one-on-one -on -one is Mark Scully. And he always delivers in those moments. Merival Austin will come off for Griffiths because he's not playing well at all. But crucially, we've nicked a lead and we are now 1-0 up. As it's a long ball forward, only as far as Miles Stow. Looks to carry the ball into midfield for Halston and Lonsdale. Releases Morgan Griffiths. Was Scully onside? He's released one on one. He's put it over the bar. I think it is a goal kick, so he must have been on, but he doesn't take his chance. We'll give it five more, and then we'll make some changes. Morgan Griffiths with a spectacular range free kick. Thought he was going to shoot for a minute there. In the end, the cross is headed away. Lonsdale gets it back in. It's pinball in the air. No one getting the ball down until Lonsdale here. Finds Miles Stow with 20 to go. Would be a lovely time to score so I can give some debuts. Chips over towards Evans, who loses out. It's away as far as Boonson. Back to his defender. Chip downfield to Ambrosio. Davis does well. Stevens loses the header. Falls for Morgan Griffiths, who slides it through for Scully. Mar Scully in. It's a good bit of goalkeeping. And it's cleared away for a throw. We're going to make more changes now. Who on earth can I bring on? I mean, there's nothing to do yet, is there? I'm going to wait five more. Well look, just over 10 minutes to go and lots of tired legs out here. So I think it's time we go for the changes. Lonsdale will be replaced by Gorman. Halston will switch sides with him. We're going to go Lowry on for Evans. We're going to go Miss Elidis off for McNair. Youthin takes stars getting an instant run out on this occasion. And then the final one, we've got Jamie Stevenson there, but he's not quite as physical in the middle. So I'll leave it a few minutes and then let him have a run out right at the end. If we concede, we can bring on McGuckin as Scully finds Lonsdale. On the left-hand side, good delivery towards Griffiths, headed away. Marshall flicks it on, nothing doing. We just can't get the second goal. We've really not got that ruthless edge we had last year. And I just look now and go, if we'd got that striker from St. Gallen for 11.5 million, who rejected us for Juve or whoever it was, we'd be an unbeatable team at the minute. As Gorman gets it into Lowry, the youngster. Is he onside? Oh, that's brilliant. One youngster with a delightful ball in. The other one with a brilliant run and finish. That's what we wanted from our stars. Brilliant work from the two of them. Halston will now come off for Jamie Stevenson. He can be a playmaker for a few minutes. And we get through the last five of the game with a 2-0 lead. And to be fair, the expected goals is almost four. But great to see a youngster on the score sheet. And great to see another setting him up. As Stevenson heads away a long ball to Stevens. This is where we are probably the weaker midfield now, so I have to be careful. As Lewington gets it wide to Evans. He cuts it into Lewington again. Chip forward to Ambrosio. Hope we haven't made those subs too soon. 
We've still got a first team defence on. We've still got a top quality striker. And as a result, we are going to win this game. As Bird's in from a set piece and he makes it 3-0. If there was any doubt, as Warburton apparently nods it in off the line, then it's gone. We've won the game. We've done it comfortably. And we managed to get some youngsters on the pitch. A brilliant performance. A good win. Not really the blowing away of opponents we were seeing last year. But a win nonetheless. A title on the way. And Champions League football returning. And boy, we've got to do better than last year. Well, it's a very simple equation now. Only one more episode this season. And barring a disaster, it will be an Irish Cup final mixed in with the season review. I want to turn those two end of season episodes into one just to get through as much as possible in this save and hopefully we'll breeze past Glenarvan and have an Irish Cup final to enjoy next time. We've still won all of the Irish trophies, just the SPFL we missed out on this year. So let's hope we can complete the set, get these youngsters some more minutes and hopefully start to plan for another very big summer. If you're looking forward to it and you did enjoy this one, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you thought of the youth intake and some of the stars we bought through. Let me know what you think we should do in a transfer window and those two boys that I've loaned out. Should they go permanently or should I be looking at others in the squad? If you're looking forward to it and you want to stay up to date, subscribe and turn that notification bell on to make sure you don't miss a thing. In the meantime, if you didn't see yesterday's video from the Bristol City Save, where on earth were you? You've got to watch it. It's a super one. It's up in the eye above. We'll be back tomorrow with more drama from there. There's also links to the Twitch channel, the Top Freeze, the football podcast, and so much more. And anything else you can't find down in the description below. But thanks for watching as always. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time for our season finale. Mm -hmm.